tears I fight. Okay, so look, looky here. Okay, so I did a reaction to um, Beyonce dropped two singles. Um, if you don't know, I don't know where you've been, but look, so she dropped two singles. Um, she is actually coming for the country genre, right? And when I say that, I mean as far as like album, okay? Um, Beyonce has done country before but the whole act two all right there's act three I, okay there's three acts of her renaissance right you had the first renaissance album now it's act two word on the street act three is gonna be a rock album okay which she has also dabbled in before so look she's doing this country album i'm so excited I was already excited, but now I'm very excited. I'm gonna tell you why. She did, she dropped two singles, Texas Hold'em, it's cute. That one's more of like a record you can, you know, do the little line dances to, it's real cute, okay? But 16 Carriages, the second single is what has me in a chokehold, okay? I've been listening to this song and this song is really deep which I mentioned when I did my reaction to it. I'll probably link my reaction in the description if you want to check it out. Um, I'm just going to break down these lyrics and we're just going to try to, you know, interpret what this song could be about. And this is just me breaking it down. This is my personal opinion. This is my, you know, interpretation. I'm just giving y'all what I think right off the top. Um, but I feel like this song needs to be talked about because I feel like it, it is very, very sad. I love this song, right? I love the music, the way the, the drums hit and her voice. I love the cadence of it, right? It's a good song and you can sometimes get kind of just lost in the song. But when you really listen to the lyrics, as I listened to it, I was like, oh my God. Like Beyonce, are you okay? You good? Are you warning us? Like, So yeah, I was kind of worried a little bit, but this is a beautiful song and the thing I love about country music is it tells a story. Country music is it's about the stories. I remember I had like a country music phase a few years ago, like for four or five months straight, I just listened to straight country. And they do, they have interesting stories and you know, you can learn a lot or you know, maybe if you've been through a situation, you can kind of like, I don't know, songs just kind of hit different, but yeah, like, She's just really storytelling. And I feel like some of this song, probably most of this song is a reflection of her own life. But I feel like she is adding also a little bit because it's storytelling. You know, you have to emphasize and add a little bit to the story. Kind of like how you do filmmaking. You know, it's a story. So you do have to add. You got to add a few things, you know, to keep people entertained or on their feet. Because that girl says, $16, been working all day. I wish somebody would give me, no, I wish I would work all day and somebody give me $16. We're gonna get into this. And I wanna, the reason I'm so, 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 so excited for this album is I love Dolly Parton, right? I watched her documentary with my mom. My sister, you know, she she watched it. So she was like, yeah, y'all should watch it. We watched it, it's probably two, two years ago, a year ago. And the, um, her documentary was so good. And you know, she talked about how, a lot of people don't know, but Whitney's Whitney Houston's song, I Will Always Love You, that's originally Dolly Parton's song. Whitney did it over. And you know, she doesn't just give people the okay to cover her song. She doesn't give them the, um, the clearage or clearance, you know, to do her song. So for her to give it to Whitney is like a big thing, but one thing that she did say was her Jolene song. If you don't know Jolene, go listen to it. That's like one of the songs that she's best known for, right? So anyway, she was just saying how she would love for Beyonce 
to do a cover or do a redo to her song Jolene. And I remember I was like, wow, Beyonce would kill it. Cause you know, Beyonce has the voice. You know, she has she's an artist. You know, she could perform it. She can really storytell, you know. But I was kind of worried because I was like, well, I don't know, Beyonce ain't that type of girl. Like she ain't gonna let nobody take her man and beg them. You know what I'm saying? But musically, Beyonce will kill it. And um yeah, like when this album was first like announced. So when I did the reaction and I was like, oh my God, this, al this country album is real. Like it's really going to happen. My thought went straight to Jolene. I wonder if she's going to do the Jolene cover. And I was just wishful thinking, right? But looky here. Yesterday on Parkwood, I was on Instagram. Parkwood, that's Beyonce's team. They reposted a letter. And y'all know Beyonce love to write letters, send people letters with flowers. So I was like, oh, this Beyonce writing to her fans. Girl, that was Dolly. Dolly done sent a message to Beyonce. I'm going to pull it up. Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, y'all. So this is the letter that Dolly um, sent to Beyonce. It was posted on the Parkwood Instagram story. It says, I'm a big fan of Beyonce and very excited that she's done a country album. <laughs> It's coming. It's official. Okay. Look here. She said, so congratulations on your billboard hot country. Number one single Beyonce is, is like out here already wrecking records. Okay. I mean, this is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful thing. I love how she's taken back. You know, I just love how she's able to do any genre. Okay. And it's black history month. And I love like Beyonce is kind of like, giving people knowledge like you know it is it's just facts it's history black people invented a lot of this music country music i mean like a lot of music rock and roll like let's be real we're the originators so it's beautiful that like you know beyonce is kind of like building her power i guess you could say and you know just Thriving in different genres. I, I'm here for it. Okay. So she, okay, she said, okay, can't wait to hear the full album. Love, Dolly. What? <laughs> so when I saw that yesterday, I'm even more excited now, y'all. We might get this Jolene cover. I don't know. We might just get it. Because I'm just saying, the Dolly gives you the okay to have her song. The one that she's most known for. And she's like, Beyonce, take it away. And now she's come out with the country album and she's approving of it. And she told Beyonce she can't wait to hear it. So I'm just like, if it hasn't already been done, hopefully it will be done. Let's cross our fingers or I'm crossing my fingers that this um, Jolene cover will be. Because Beyonce will eat that up. Beyonce will eat that up. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, don't take my man. Like, Beyonce will kill that. So, I'm really leaning more towards that. I think it's actually going to happen. I hope so. But even if it doesn't happen, I'm really, I'm also happy to hear this album. And a lot of people was trying to say that, like, Beyonce isn't country. Just because um, her country music has... Um, R&B in it. It has pop. People are trying to say, oh, that's not the, um, what the word did they use? And I was like, that's not fair. Cause Beyonce still has to be true to herself. She still has to be true to herself. Um, you know, her influences are R&B. Her influences are pop, you know, but she does other genres. Okay. Just because it's not strictly straight country. She didn't use certain instruments. People are trying to say, oh, it's not country. It is country. It's not what she's done before. It is country music. And a lot of country music today is um, it's, it's the same way. It's based, you might, have, it's, you might have country, but they have a tad bit of pop. It might be country, but they have a tad bit of rock. Like, stuff is not just, just straight country. I don't know. I just don't know what y'all, I just don't know what y'all be talking about. I, I just... I don't understand, like, why, why is it so much hate? Why is it so much hate? Okay. 
All right, we're going to get to these lyrics. Okay, 16 carriages. We're going to get into these lyrics. Um, So 16 carriages, when I first heard that, I was like, dang, that's a lot of carriages. You know, and even when I'm listening to the song, I'm like, 16 carriages? Like the things they used to drive back, you know, like the wagons, I guess you can say. Let's let's look and see what comes up. We're going to look and see what comes up when I Google carriages. They're like, you know, um, Disney movies, yeah. So 16 of these things, honey. That was like, that's a lot. 16 carriages, girl. But um, a lot in this song, Beyonce focuses on the number 16. And I just kind of sit back and think like, okay, what does the number 16 mean to her? You know, I'm thinking this is the age that her life changed dramatically, okay? She was in this industry, okay? Innocence gone. She talks about it. Okay, let's get into it. I would sing it for y'all. <laughs> I would sing it for y'all how B sung it, but I mean B sung being the way the way B sung this song. Like, she don't even need me. Like, she did it justice, so I don't have to sing for y'all. But I would, I would. Okay, so 16 carriages driving away while I watch them ride with my dreams away. Wow. <laughs> Who wrote this, B? Did you write this, B? I feel like B had to write, come up with this. I don't know if she 100% wrote it. I did a video where they was calling out Beyonce, talking about she don't write. She be getting, uh, she be giving her, she be um, claiming more than she's supposed to. Her percentages be crazy. But I feel like it's so personal. So I feel like Beyonce had to have wrote it. And she always gets, you know, people to help when she's in the studio because I just feel like it's great to be able to, you know, kind of, it's just good to be in a space where everybody's a creative and everybody can just kind of bounce off of each other and it makes it better. You know what I'm saying? Like what's, what's the saying? Um, you know, I just feel like there's power in numbers. So why do a song? Yeah, you can do a song when it's just me. Yeah. But imagine if you got three or four people and y'all all just like, and you got your producers and y'all all just make this beautiful project. I feel like it's going to be more better. It's going to be more powerful. So what's, it's, it's hard to watch something leave. What? You got to watch a dream or just anything. It's hard to see anybody go. I remember, I never forget my grandma, she used to make me feel so bad. You know, I'd be like, I'll be back tomorrow or I'll be back, you know, in a couple of days. And she just really hated to see me leave her house. So it's just really hard to watch anything go. But yes, honey, she said she watched them ride with her dreams away. Her dreams are leaving, huh? And sometimes you just feel like, ah, I can't, it's just driving away. Like I can't, I can't have it anymore. It's just leaving me. You didn't hear her say, I'm, I'm going to run and try to catch it. Like she just watched, like she know I ain't going to, I ain't going to be able to catch it. I just have to watch it go away. Ain't that deep? While I watch them ride with my dreams away to the summer set on a holy night. On a long black road, all the tears I fight. I don't know, y'all. I just, I, I'm just like, imagine how that feels. That's why I'm like, ugh, <laughs> ugh. And then the way that beat hits, like sixteen carriages, and then it just pow. It's like that beat hits. So you feel it even more like, oh, it's hitting my heart. What's she saying? And, and you know they had to be riding away fast, honey. We ain't watching nothing slow. Them things, especially they got the horse on them. Them things. Girl, them things gone, boo-boo. Them things gone. They riding with your dreams and everything. Wow. So it says, though. To a summer sunset. So it's like, it's not dark, right? It's not dark, but the sun is setting. Okay, it's almost dark. The sun is setting. 
And what's crazy, it's probably a beautiful view. I'm just imagining this, y'all. I feel like a lot of this is not like, it's just imagery. It's not really literal. So I'm just imagining like, dang, all these carriages. You know, they probably look kind of like a silhouette. They riding away. The sun said it's probably a beautiful view. But at the same time, like, it's just a horrible feeling. Like, I have to watch this. You know what I'm saying? It says the road is black. Ah. So you have to watch it ride off into the sunset? Ah. <laughs> and you left in the dark? On a dark road? <sighs> Wow. And the thing is, like, I think they said Beyonce wrote this, like, a few years ago. I think this is an old song. So at the time, you really don't know what she's speaking of. She could be talking about her dream of being um, this successful singer. Her dream of being a mother. You know, I don't know what Beyonce's dreams are. I know she got big dreams. I know that girl got big dreams. But wow, this is kind of like everything you're, you're working for is leaving you? And going off into the sunset while you sit on a lone black road watching? Okay. So this is, this is really sad. This is really sad. Okay, I'm fighting tears. <laughs> oh, I'm fighting tears. I will let the tears roll out, girl. I ain't gonna even fight them things, honey. I'm gonna let the tears come out. And then she says it again. 16 carriages driving away while I watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> while I watch them ride with my dreams away to the summer sunset on a holy night on a lone black road, the tears I fight. Holy night. Mm, holy night. I just I just think about like Christmas, you know, I think about like the birth of Christ. I just feel like So what was the meaning of putting holy in front of this night? This night that is happening is the worst night ever, but it's holy. Holy is good, right? What they say the night is still young. We're going to get into the verse, the first verse. At 15, the innocence was gone astray. Had to leave my home at an early age. I saw mama praying. I saw daddy grind. All my tender problems had to leave behind. Mm. So this is very, very, um, I feel like this is Beyonce talking about her life. Definitely this is her life story right here. Okay, but you notice she says 15. She doesn't say 16. She says 15, right? I feel like I could be wrong because I said 16 is when it all started for her. But maybe 16 is just referring to something else. Hmm. Why do y'all think she chose the number 16 carriages? But I don't know. I feel like something happened. I don't know what 16 really represents. Uh so I just looked up the num the number 16 and it just means like, as far as like angel numbers, it just means like your life path. So I don't know. Maybe Beyonce knows what the number 16 meant. I don't know. Or maybe she has like a personal um, reason why she wanted to use 16. But I find it interesting that 15 was the age that it all started for her. I remember in the song Diva, because I'm a Beyonce fan, she says... Since 15 and my stilettos been strutting in this game. So this was probably really when it all happened for her. You know, she had to leave home, okay? Her mom and her daddy invested in her, invested in her dream. They put everything into Beyonce's dream. If I could be wrong, but I think I, I think like Beyonce was saying how like they was, she's always come from like, I feel like her mom and dad were, like, upper class, right? But I think there was a time where, like, her dad kind of, like, lost his job and they had to move to, like, a smaller home. So I'm thinking, you know, she's probably, like, at 15 is when probably her dad was like, okay, 
I'm a grind. You know, he was her, um, he used to be her manager. You know, he's a businessman. So, okay, this is probably when he started grinding, you know, getting in the industry, and it can make all of our lives change. But that's hard for a mother to have to be like, you know, we got to put everything into our daughter. Like, she's basically kind of like a woman now. She's kind of like the woman of the house, you know? Like, all of our funds, we're basically living, we're going to be living off of my daughter and the, the Destiny's Child. We're putting all our faith into this, okay? A dream. But that's very eye-opening. Like, honey, I had to watch my mama cry, my daddy grinding. I had to just suck it up and and I'm not a kid, you know? She she couldn't be a kid. She was on a mission. Honey, innocence gone. You know what I'm saying? She has to be an adult. And I never realized that as a young kid watching a lot of these artists on TV. I always thought they were grown, you know? And they would make these young girls look grown. I think of like Aaliyah, Monica, Brandy. All these girls were like 14, 15 when they got into this game. And they had to dress them up and make them look older. So it's like, girl, innocence gone. Like, I got to be a whole grown woman out here at 15. What? That's hard for any mother to watch. You know what I'm saying? She said, all my tender problems, honey. I got bigger problems to face right now. This is life or death, honey. All right, here's the pre-chorus. It's been umpteen summers. She don't even know, honey. She don't know. She know they in the teens. And I'm not in my bed. Mm. Just think, man. She got to work. She's working. She's working. In the studio. Performances, interviews. Flying here and there. Hair, makeup. That girl ain't been home. She ain't been in her bed. It's sad. It's a lonely life. On the back of this bus in a bunk with the band. Or, I mean, I'm thinking Destiny's Child, but, I mean, right now she's saying it's been a few a few summers. So now I'm thinking, like, Beyonce's grown now. She's on tour. She got her band, you know, her all-female band. Going so hard, got to choose myself. Come on. Don't we get like that? I feel like it's, I want to say it's a Virgo thing, but really it's not. It's a lot of people who work, 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 and they get lost in work. And they don't remember, like, I got to live. You know, I got a life to live, too. I got to be happy. I can't just work myself to death, you know. And some people, when you're working and working and working, you don't take care of yourself. Like, you working so hard. Like, girl, did you bathe today? I remember I seen an interview where Beyonce said she was working so hard on one of her tours that, like, she forgot to eat. B, how you forget to eat, boo-boo? Your stomach didn't growl? So you do. You At least she, you got to take care of yourself, B. You can work too hard. It's, you can work too hard. And that's the thing, y'all don't give, a lot of people don't give Beyonce credit for being a hard worker. She's about her business, her craft. But it's to a point where, girl, B, sometimes you got to just, you got to. You got to take care of home, honey. Let me see, go up. underpaid so this is this is the part that like really I feel like a lot of people can resonate with right when she said this underpaid and overwhelmed that's me every day I gotta stop though it's not good to be stressed y'all we gotta stop but this is true these are facts this is life okay I might cook clean but still won't fold come on <laughs> Beyonce is snapping. This is the part where she kind of starts rapping. So she's giving bars, okay? 
Still working on my life. You know, only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows. Wow. So I love that she said that I might cook clean but still won't fold. It's metaphoric, you know. You cook clean, you fold clothes. You know what I'm saying? So she's saying, I'm going to do all these things. She referred it to like home wife, cooking, cleaning, folding clothes, but she is really talking about her work life. I'm a cook, I'm a clean, how do housewives do? I'm going to do all that, but I ain't going to fold. Like I, I ain't going to let anything stop me. I'm going to stand firm. Come on, still working all my life. Wow. That's sad right there. Who wants to work their whole life? You know, a lot of people in America, you know, they work for so long and then they, you know, they work toward retirement. So they don't have to work their whole lives. You know, or some people, you know, they have to settle down. Oh, I'm going to work, 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 save, save, save. And then I'm going to settle down. Okay? And that's why it's good to have your business in order because who doesn't want to retire early, like at an early age, and be set for life? Who wants to work their whole life? Like, that's not ideal at all. And it kind of makes me think, like, dang, Beyonce, does Beyonce still have to work? Or does she just love it that much? I feel like Beyonce don't have to work. But it goes back to her just being a hard worker and music is like her first love. So I don't think Beyonce is going to ever stop. But sometimes it's okay to like retire, give it a break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and a lot of people are saying like they think like after these second and third acts, they think Beyonce will retire. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I see it. Even if she stops making music, I feel like she'll still tour. But I don't know. Goes back into the chorus, 16 carriages driving away while I watched him ride, fears away. She repeats the same thing, okay? And then this is verse two. She goes back to 16. I wonder what made her use $16. I get now that like this song is just about teens, you know? I think it's just about her teen years. So she just stuck to the teens. 16. <laughs> 16 dollars. Or maybe it's a story we don't know. Maybe somebody tried me and gave her 16 dollars. Maybe that's where this 16 comes from. 16 dollars. Working all day. I ain't got time to waste. I got all to make. Okay, let me stop. So wow. You got to respect the drive, though. But 16 after working all day? And then it's like, sometimes, sometimes it takes determination, you know? But you got no time to waste. We are not here forever, guys. That's so true. Um, I got love to create on this holy night. A lot of people was saying, like, is Beyonce pregnant? What does she mean? Is Beyonce pregnant? Um, like I said, this was wrote years ago. Um, I got love to create on this holy night. Could be. You know, I'm trying to leave a legacy. You know? Or she could be saying, like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to give different perspectives. She could just be talking about, like, her fans, her community, you know? I'm trying to spread the love. Or my music. My art, my music. I got love to create. This is my music. I love it, you know? Could be that. They won't dim my light. All these years I fight. 
Mm. Who? Who is they? That's. I feel like that's like a, a good question. People always ask, "Who? Who is they? Who are they?" I feel like you could put anybody in there. Take a take a wise guess, or what do you? Who do you want to put in that? They won't dim my light. I just look at it as like haters. People working against you. I'm gonna have to uh, put this window down. You know, people talk in your ear, especially when you're on a mission, when you have a big dream, you're going to have naysayers. They're going to try to talk you out of it, try to make you feel like, you know, you can't get there, you can't do it. She's on a mission. I don't care what nobody say. They can't dim my light. I've been in this for years now. So now we're getting into the years. We getting into middle age, Beyonce, now. Y'all ain't gonna damn my life all these years I've been doing this. I started with a dream in $16. What? Hell y'all talking about. Okay, so look. All right, this is the pre-chorus. Um, it's been. 38. Oh, we got a different number. It's been 38 summers. 38 summers. And I'm not in my bed. How old is Beyonce? How old is the queen? <laughs> you know, she's 42. So I don't know. A lot of people are saying, like, is, is she still on this road? Is she still on this road? Has she not hit her mark yet? On the back of the bus, it's a bump with the band going so hard. Now I miss my kids. Y'all, that's sad. I love how she's reflecting, you know, because a lot of people see this industry or they just see, like, the music business or even Beyonce. When they hear Beyonce or think Beyonce, they just think, like, oh, she's perfect. She's an angel. You know, but... Everybody lives in this life. We all struggle with things. Like, nothing is perfect. I love how she's having, like, a different, um, it's just kind of like a different take, like, of what people always say or view the music industry. You know, and this is coming from Beyonce, someone who's very successful, who has done a lot. But every sacrifice, well, Every dream or want comes with a sacrifice. What are y'all willing to sacrifice? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people love to talk about the Illuminati. I'm not talking about that. I just mean like a lot of people are willing to sacrifice their time. Like with me being, you know, a content creator, you know, I sacrifice my time. I don't be out doing stuff. I be in here working. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But you have to sacrifice certain things. You might be like, oh, I ain't going to go out tonight. I'm going to stay in and work, you know? Or if you play sports, you may be like, nah, you know, I got to go here. I got practice. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice things. So with Beyonce, it's sad, though, but she has to sacrifice not seeing her kids. To go tour. To fill them pockets up for her kids. It ain't all glitter and gold. Even though she had that glittery aluminum <laughs> platinum on that uh on that horse, honey. It ain't all glitter and gold. She's letting y'all know. Come on, B. Dang. Overworked and overwhelmed. I might cook clean, but still won't fold. I'm still a mother. I'm going to do these things, but I ain't going to fold. Still working on my life. You know, only God knows, only God knows, only God knows. All right, so...
We have the chorus again. She repeats. And I love that, like, as every time Beyonce sings the chorus, it's like you just feel it. Like, it's almost like a cry in her voice as she sings, you know? And she's doing all these crazy runs, but it's like, and leave my home at a early age. You know, like, you feel it. Okay? At 15, the innocence was going astray. Had to leave my home at an early age. I know mama crying. I saw daddy lying. Uh-oh. So he went from grinding to now he's lying. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? That's what I don't like. Because, you know, a lot of people, they grind, they grind, they grind. They get in this industry. They, they kind of start seeing... What they've worked for is starting to, you know, they're bearing the the labor or they're, they're bearing the fruit of their labor. And they change. Start acting brand new. Why you lying, Matthew? Where you been, Matthew? You forgot where you came from? You forgot I was here? I, I was here from the start? When we had $16 in a dream? <laughs> what? Daddy is lying. Oh. Why you want to lie now? Dang. Had to sacrifice. There it is. And leave my fears behind. Y'all know how hard that is? To be like scared. But you still do it, even in that fear. Or even if you don't want to do it. Mm. But sometimes you got to do it. You don't want to, but it's like you got to. Daddy want to lie. Who else going to do it for me? I got to do it for myself. And when you a mother, when you got kids, like, you who, you ain't got time to be scared. You ain't got time to have fears. You know what I'm saying? Watch out. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Even if you scared, watch out. I'm going to do it anyway. Crazy, right? In your memory, mm, on the highway to truth. Okay, I didn't even know she said this, y'all. Hold on. It's getting good. In your memory. On the highway to truth, still see our faces when you close your eyes. So she's saying in your memory. Is she talking to the listeners? Is she talking to her fans, community, supporters? Mm. She says, still, still see our faces when you close your eyes. I don't know. I just feel like she's, you know, it makes me think of a dream. You know, a lot of people dream and they see the people like Beyonce. They see the Drakes, the Nicki Minaj's. You know, it ain't, it ain't always cracked up to be. But people still want this lifestyle. Y'all tell me what y'all think that means right there. What do y'all think that means? And then the last part, and she says this like so longing and like she's just so sad. And she says the last part, 16 carriages driving away while I watch them ride with my dreams away. Hmm. You know, usually like in songs, you you're a lot of songs you're kind of down, you're sad, but it always like before the song ends, you have like a triumph moment. Like you get it together. And I love that like this song is almost like you can compare it to today cuz I feel like it's still a journey that she's on. You know? 
because she's still here and living. Is this a be continued or does it stop? Is that it? Is that all? Are the carriages gone? Are you never going to get them back? Are your dreams gone? I don't know, B. I don't know. Is is Beyonce saying, you know, she just feels unappreciated? Is she saying that she don't feel like her dreams or what she's worked for? Does she feel like she's losing her dream and everything she's worked for? Is Beyonce a slave to the industry? She's still working all day. She miss her kids. The Beyonce? Do y'all think it's that deep or y'all think she's just telling a story? I think it's some truth in it. I think Beyonce is kind of giving us a message here. But I think it goes over a lot of people's head. But I don't know, man. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I, I'm just, I just really wanted to break this down. I really wanted to see the lyrics in front of me because I'm the type of person where I make up lyrics, you know, but I've always been the type to go and see what a person is saying and try to interpret it. And then when you know the words, the song really hits different. It really hits different. And I'll probably listen to it again and again and again, and then I'll get a whole nother interpretation. So that's just what I love about music, you know. Um, I don't think there's like a right and a wrong. It's just what you imagine, what you see, your mind, how you think. So I feel like a lot of people can relate to this story, but I feel like it's very personal, and I feel like Beyonce is really just being um, just – really looking at herself in the mirror. Like the visual, the visualizer that she did, she's looking at herself in the mirror the whole time. So I feel like she's kind of, um, yeah, she's really being very vulnerable. And like I said, she's sung this with her heart and soul. I think she means every bit of it. But it's a beautiful song. Beautiful song. I'm glad she came out with this as a single. I'm ready for this country album. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Ah! <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Do all that good stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Main channel, backup channel will be linked in my description. Um, I think we almost at 60,000. 60,000? What? On the road to 100K. I don't know, y'all think I can make it or we can make it? Because I'm going to need y'all help. I can't do it by myself. I really appreciate y'all. Um, y'all let me know if y'all excited for this album. Y'all let me know if y'all think uh, Beyonce is country. Or is she not country? Do you want a country album? Do you want a rock album? She gave us a dance album. I feel like Beyonce has tackled pretty much everything. Um, she had a rap album. She's, of course, done R&B and pop. She's even done a few gospel songs. I'm, I mean, it's just like, why not keep striving for greatness? Shout out, Beyonce. Shout out, Parkwood. Lovely people over there. <laughs> Lovely people over at Parkwood. They're so sweet. Um, yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think. Put it in the comments. Um, I'm about to get out of here. I'll see y'all on my next one.